Hey, and we are live. Uh, welcome to OMG Overclock Mod Game. And today on the show, uh, I have a Davido Labido. Is that how we pronounce it? Yeah. Uh, oh, you can pronounce it however you want, man. Davido Labido, or just idiot, like most people do. All right. Well, <laughs> well sure. You you said that. I didn't say anything. Yeah. Uh, guys, <laughs> as you can also see uh, today on the show, we are in my living room, which is a bit of a change of a scenery. And uh, Isai is not there because he's currently. Um, on some little trip uh, throughout France, visiting friends and family after having been at the Gamers Assembly and TwitchCon for the last uh, few weeks. Um, but so for this week's show, we thought it might be actually a good occasion um, with David to discuss about um, the future of LAN events. But before we start that, I'm going to give a little uh, mention uh, for the people that are watching the stream or just tuning in. Uh, this stream will also be available in replay on our YouTube channel. And if you're watching that on YouTube, good for you. Don't forget to subscribe to it. Also, the stream uh, and the audio version of it can be found as a podcast uh, anywhere you listen to podcast just uh, look for omg and you will be able to find it so don't forget about that all right so now that the little advertising moment is done david <laughs> let's start uh, first uh, with a quick introduction of who you are for the people that might not know you yeah sure um so yeah i started life as a modder so doing modified pcs and making pretty things basically nothing nothing too crazy but they did well um, then I went into media, working for multiple media companies in the industry, and now I do marketing PR for AlphaCool. So it's uh, one of the leading water cooling brands on the market. Right. So I do all right. Nice, nice. That's good. That's a good life story. So, so basically, you you start you started modding a long time ago already, right? Yeah, yeah. About six, seven years ago, I started modding. Um, and but I, the only reason I started modding is because I went to a LAN event, saw these cool water cooling computers, which I thought, you know, they are mm -hmm. awesome. At that time, I was playing Battlefield 2 competitively on stage and everything. I thought, one day I'm going to own one of them PCs. And I thought, I'm, when I'm older, because I was about 14, 15 at the time, yeah. I thought, when I'm older, I'm going to buy one of them, like just bang it on the credit card and <laughs> waste all my money. And, and this is what you what did, did. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what I did. When I was 18, I called my friend and said, listen, I want one of these water-cooled computers. Um, I've just got a credit card. How do I do it? And he ran ran through everything, told me what to buy, told me what I needed. And, yeah, that's that's how it started. I built my first PC, realized that the case could have been a lot better if I just cut some holes in it, basically. I <laughs> <laughs> it at my first LAN event that I took. Well, that's good. That's uh, I mean, that's the way most I think uh, most case models start, right? You try to improve like uh, maybe airflow as well, like you know, uh, sort of things like that, and then try to make it more fancy because you know it's not fancy enough. And then uh, blue is apparently the most efficient color for cooling. Did you know that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep away from red. Red's too hot. Yeah. <laughs> so so basically, yeah. very early on, your whole modding uh, your whole modding career started basically from your attendance to those line events right yeah yeah exactly the only reason that i am um, i went to the lands to start with was for gaming i used to be in the top 50 on quite a lot of games so i was always in quite a lot of teams for mainly like battlefield 2 and you know like the fps stuff and then we got sponsored by a company in the uk for the gaming side of things right call of duty came out and killed completely killed battlefield um, so yeah, then that the lands were like the main thing that I went for, and then it's just progressed and progressed to where I am now. Oh, that's very cool. So so those lands, let's talk about it because uh, so in your in Europe there are many land parties. Uh, which were the ones that you actually attended in uh, in the UK? Um, so we do the main one for us was Insomnia. That's the yeah. biggest one, Insomnia Gaming Festival. Um, I started going there at I twenty three, I think it is. And we're now up to I-65, so that was a long time ago. So every ago. year they we... increase that number, or? Yeah, okay. yeah. So the only the only number that they missed out was I-13 because it was unlucky. Oh. His mum wouldn't let him have it, okay. <laughs> basically. Okay. Um, so, but we've got Epic Lands, we've got um, TFF, we've got there's loads of little lands in the UK, um, which oh the MM Land, which is like a 50 player land, but it was 
sort of awesome. I used to love that one as well. But yeah, it was, it's just a big community that kind of just move around and go to all the lands. Okay. So basically what you really liked in those lands were um, the social aspect, I suppose, was meeting up with friends or those people that you were uh, maybe playing with like on a regular basis online. But this was the sort of the meeting point offline, I'd say, where basically things were happening in the real world. Um, is that something also like was that also the place where you were seeing people that you were never in touch with during the year or oh yeah for sure yeah so um things like the the main thing for me is always the social side of things um even when it's coming to the companies so that attended the lands you'd only get to see somebody from aces or somebody from like overclockers say at the events you'd never get that actual personal interaction with a company you know if, as a end user mm -hmm. And it's always good to, you know, sometimes you don't want to complain, but you want to just say, like, oh, I bought this product and I had this little issue. And it's that feedback from the end user for now that I'm in the industry, but at the time it was the feedback from the from their company. And it's instant interaction, no waiting for Facebook. You don't have to, you know, get any... Call the hotline. Sort of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's just so easy yeah. to do. Um, but, yeah, the the main reason is just... At that time as well, a lot of games you couldn't play over uh, online, mm -hmm. like not properly anyway. Um, so getting like that zero ping at LAN events is just yeah. amazing as well. No latency. Right. So, just... so basically, let's talk a bit more about uh, the model of Insomnia. Because uh, like, so this, I think for, for those for, for the people that are listening and watching, um, when it comes to LAN events, there are those events who are just LAN parties and then there's nothing else there than just people meeting up, playing games, uh, have a bunch of switches, connect everything together and eat pizza for a weekend. And then there are the other LANs, which are more like the, like Insomnia or Dreamhack, for example, which actually they call gaming festivals or festivals. So, yeah. so there's more things going on there. So can you describe basically everything that's happening on Insomnia nowadays? Yeah, so at the start it was more like a big LAN, um, but now, like you say, it's a gaming festival. Um, so now you've got a big BYOC hall, which in the Easter, it's a fair few players still. It's not huge, huge, it's not like Dreamhack scale, but it's still, mm -hmm. it's the biggest one in the UK. Um, and then they have a separate hall for all the merchandise, all the hardware companies, you know, and all things like that. But lately it's... To be honest, it's been absolutely trash. There's no point in going in. You have a 10 minute walk around and just go, nah, there's nothing here. Yeah. It, it, so the one there's that nothing here in terms to... of the expo or there's nothing here, just even the whole land is also like, kind of like that. Um, the land's not too bad. You've still got this, like, there, are, there is a team there that all they do is try and make it so it's like a social event and they do an awesome job they put on like gaming nights for in board games they do sort of like the pub quiz side of things and all this kind of stuff so there is like that element of social interaction that they forcing through which they're doing a really good job as well there's no knocking that but in terms of the actual uh like the exhibits and the exhibition it, you can tell since it's been purchased by Game, which is a huge store in the UK. I don't know if uh, you you no, guys have it. Um, but Game purchased um, the event, and since then it's just been sort of they're just getting like stores that sell cheap right. tat, you know, like, so um, like phone cables yeah, yeah. and like uh, accessories, these... and, but not like uh, major stuff. Yeah, and the pricing out the big companies so. I, I actually made a post on Facebook, which you saw, which is kind of where this conversation yep, started from. Exactly. And a, and a lot of the guys on my Facebook, are the reps for big hardware companies, and all of them were either saying they've been priced out or they're not going because not, not enough other companies are going because they've been priced out. Yeah. And it's just turned into sort of a, oh, yeah, let, let's get loads of cheap people in so everyone goes to the big game booth and spends all the money there because they are selling the keyboards from like multiple companies right. so they just want them to be making all the sales i think okay that's yeah. the only so, so that's the only reason I can so a lot of those uh those big booths that are left are basically resellers right like they're not the companies themselves but just resellers that carry the products within the uk and just resell it to local i mean to the attendance of the show yeah it's yeah they're just like um 
little the little market stalls basically like a 1.5 meter booth oh, and wow. they've got just Even small stuff. loads of yeah. yeah just loads of rubbish on there like <laughs> it's stuff that you just walk past yeah it's, you're like eh, whatever like, you know <laughs> i have the yeah. same i see the same on amazon <laughs> yeah exactly like there was a booth selling like body pillows and then there was, there was about five booths all selling the same horse masks like latex horse masks yeah which is great if it was just a booth selling horse masks, you know, like a specialist booth that could do stuff like that. But it wasn't. It was just an absolute yeah. just stall of just random mix and match bits. So basically that, that, that negative evolution of uh, how, so in that specific example for Samsung, yeah, but the what happened is that through time sort of when it transitioned to maybe maybe a slightly different business model in the end right where maybe because at the start they were starting to do the land and they brought in those big brands like hardware brands as sponsors of it because it was related to the to the to basically the industry of pc gaming um mm-hmm. what happened is that so progressively uh, maybe more retailers and just other kind of people selling stuff uh, ended up knocking on the door hey we want in as well and basically they pushed up the pricings uh, because i mean like in the end in some years in business and they were like well we can make more money just getting those people in instead of others um so they sort of focused on that do you, do you think is it's only due because um management has changed there over time uh, throughout the years or is it just also just pure business and it would have happened anyway uh, no, I think it's mainly the management change over. Um, so the guy who does run it still runs a smaller land called Stratlan, which is at around Christmas time, I think, is the main one. And that apparently that's a really, really good land still. Like It's more focused on the community, more focused on having the gamers there. And that's... I've not been, so I've, mm-hmm. this is sort of like second-hand information, but everyone just always tells me, go to Stratland, you'll love it. It's like right. what ICVs was back in the day. So it's basically um, that, that land is still the old-school fashion way of doing it, but it is the true, the true yeah. spirit, for, for you at least, of, of a land party. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And don't get me wrong, it's now it is a gaming festival. They're more focused on getting people through the door, like you say, because yeah. um, I think... It's a the family last event, one, right? Like some people go there, they don't even attend the LAN. They just come there for the expo. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The people get day tickets, which I think are £35 oh, yeah. a ticket. And it all that allows them to do is they can only go in to the exhibit. So it's a little bit like PAX where they have uh, the bring your own PC area where you can get a ticket for. Yeah. Uh, and then you can also still get uh, day tickets for the show. And actually, uh, I don't know if it's the same for Insomnia, but at PAX, if you get a bring your own PC ticket, you don't have access to the show either. You need to pay extra oh. day tickets for the show from what I understood. Which oh, is no. Like, eh, no, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> Interesting. No, it's in some of you. If you buy a BYOC ticket, you've got full access to right. the exit. I think you can even go in an hour earlier as well, so that you don't have to put up with the crowds. Which is Ooh, so you know, there are things there that <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are things there that do work for the BYOC community. But now it's kind of like the BYOC people is sort of the afterthought, and the main yes. uh, focus is on just getting people through the door because they're thirty-five pound ahead, and I think. And in Somnia last year, there was something like 50,000 people wow. that went so to the weekend. So it's massive still, eh? Yeah, something stupid like yeah. that. I have got the, the deck somewhere that tells you exactly how much it is, uh, how much how many people went. But it's, um, it's just crazy how it's changed over the years from being a small event into this huge sort of money-making machine mm. that doesn't do, it doesn't focus on anybody much, though. It's kind of like... It, so... I was talking to one guy at the event and they were saying, oh, it's it's all about consoles now. I'm like, it's not though. You've got <laughs> you've got Sony there and that, and yeah. you had Nintendo there, but that was it. So it wasn't even all about consoles. There was two booths about consoles. And then someone else was saying, oh, it's all about games. No, there's like four game stands. Then they were all ones that, like nothing was an exclusive. Mm. It was all stuff that had already been out. Like they had... Mortal Kombat, the new Mortal Kombat, they had Apex, which has been out for I don't know how many months now. So there's nothing there that's sort of making people go through the door. Yeah. They have um, the meet and greets. Yep. So with with, celebrities um, or influencers or Twitch streamers, stuff like that. Yeah. Do, does Twitch, again, Twitch has a booth there? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, Twitch. They have Syndicate always goes, Tom, mm-hmm. but he's been he's been sort of. Um, 
associated with i series for years so i think he always goes yeah, right. oh yeah um, fanatic were there as well oh, cool um but i don't i didn't see any fanatic players just like the brand and like one or two sort of uh, people there right. that, so they were selling that, merch that, or something that, like that yeah yeah yeah, they probably had some players knocking around, you know, helping to sell, but the, I didn't see them actually playing on stage because um, it started with a big esports um, push as well. So it used to be that you used to have a lot of the big esports yeah. teams there. So TSM have been there, like Dignitas. You've had, um, you know, loads of the big players, big teams. So this is no more. They aren't That's, there. I mean, the tournament part it, is not no more focus either. Uh, there, it's it's there still, but it's nowhere near as yeah. big. It's There's more... no major games or qualifiers for existing championships, no. or I mean, like for example, the StarCraft Championships. So there's no, the, no it's not an official not stop on the ESL roadmaps or anything. Yeah, not that I know of. Um, it used to be, um, so you used to have ESL. Mm -hmm. Once did some stuff there as well for the CS:GO stuff. Um, you used to have loads of stuff like that, but no, it's now this esports stage is just. You had about 20 people watching it, and that was it. Yeah. Um, or every time I walk past, anyway, it might might get busier during the day. Yeah. So really, but... the the challenge for them, it's um, I mean, for the challenge for them, or even for the people attending, it's to find basically what are you here for. Uh, it's like if you're here for the land, and then then good, you still has the still have the land, but maybe it's maybe it's the crowd that is going to that land also probably has changed throughout the years. Uh, and I guess if you're in for the expo, then you're probably just there for the expo. And then maybe year after year, you might find less and less something special about it uh, that you would not be able to go and get into regular game conventions or something like that, right? Um, well, I, kind of, yeah. But the thing that a lot of people noticed is the people who actually go are pretty much the same people each year. The, the actual BYOC mm -hmm. bit, I'd probably guess new people each time is probably like 10%. It's an estimate, but, you know, it's it's not many. Normally you walk around yeah. and the first day is just saying hi to like hundreds of people you've met before. Um, so I've worked at the event on booths with Corsair, with HyperX, with Overclockers and stuff like that. So I've met a lot of people at the event, so it's it's kind of crazy how many people you know there. Yeah. But a lot of people actually go to the event with the thought of buying new parts of the computer, uh, new monitors because they know the hardware companies are I going see, to be there so overclockers actually did a uh, delivery to the desk you can order on their website so when you say overclockers it, it's oc uk the, the yeah, oh, yeah yeah overclockers uk yeah, so, so for yeah. those who are watching uh, this is uh they're part of case king right yeah yeah, yeah case king going to yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they bring so, your uh, pc to straight to your desk at the LAN area yeah oh that's cool if you that's want a nice to buy service. something yeah, if you want to buy, like, even if a headset or a water cooling fitting, if you purchase it on their website, you can select um, to space have it. In. Yeah, you say, and they'll just bring it to you, uh, usually that day. So people, the amount of times people bought gaming chairs, because the, the actual chairs that are at the event suck, so people just buy yeah. a gaming chair, and it earns them loads of money. Um, Scan, who's another, yes. probably the other biggest UK um, e seller and retailer, they used to have a booth with physical stock, so you could just go to them and buy right. stuff. Um, um, this time, neither of them happened. So Overclockers UK were there, but they weren't selling, and Scan just didn't bother going at all. Okay. Um, you've had performance PCs there. You've had Yo-Yo Tech. You, you know, all the big UK brands have all gone at some point, mm. but now it's just nothing. Yeah, so it's, crazy. so it's quite interesting actually to see what happened to to Insomnia. So like, basically what happens on that same weekend, uh, the April uh, Easter weekend basically, because Insomnia is on yeah. Easter weekend. Um, at that same time, you have competing gaming events in Europe and other places, right? Because it's an extended weekend. So, I mean, it's it's the perfect weekend to, to host that kind of event because people can probably take either the Friday off or they have the Monday off. So it makes kind of like time for traveling there and you can spend two full, yep. at least two full days on site. Um, so in France, you have Gamers Assembly, which is... Um, the biggest LAN in France, and it's been going now for 20 years, so they were celebrating their 20th anniversary this year. Um, 
Isai was there, and so from from what he told me, it's basically <coughs> it's it's not as bad as in Insomnia in regards that there's yeah. still the brands and the local uh, PC um, basically the the local PC uh, events that are uh, companies that are going there. Um, you do have resellers there, but they've always been there, uh, part of it. But I think the key difference is really um, it's. It's the spirit, you know, the spirit that the, the organizers have built for the events. Uh, I think Gamers Assembly, they, they they succeeded at keeping it, you know, super casual, super fa family oriented. Uh, they have those stages which are at the center of everything uh, where you yeah. have those, you know, sometimes it's just some some guys just talking funny stuff. They have an opening ceremony that's hilarious every year. Um, they have, you know, those tournaments. They have big tournaments because they are one of the... One of the StarCraft qualifier stuff. Uh, they have uh, some, like they have some ESL meetup points and things like that as well for some specific championships. Uh, so it's it's an important event uh, for gamers in France and more and more European gamers that are also traveling there because of the championships, basically. Uh, but um, it hasn't turned out like Insomnia did. But it's also much smaller. So basically, what they 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 don't have the space to expand. Maybe like Insomnia had in the big ex exhibition hall. Um, what they ended up having is they already moved twice, and now they have this expo hall, which is the biggest in town. But it's already full with them. So they use two big halls for just the 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 land area, and then what they have this kind of like a circular. Uh, I think it's like a velodrome, you know, where you do cycling and yeah, circle. Yeah. Uh, and basically, they, they just have that, and that's where they do the expo, and they have the main stage in there. Uh, but everything is quite quite small, you know. It's not like a yeah. super massive. They also have panels as well, so they have some uh, either volunteers or you know organizations, associations uh, that go there and host a panel about a specific topic. Um, so it it made it like. A, stay you know to that like family dimension and it doesn't look like it's uh it became as money oriented maybe as uh insomnia has um, yeah so i guess that's one of the differences but i'm i'm pretty sure it, it, this same thing that happened to insomnia most likely happened to other land events oh yeah for sure i reckon once money becomes the 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 thing that powers the event rather than making people have a good time i think that's when it sort of switches over yeah um because uh, Insomnia started exactly the same. It started in a little tiny hall at the, at the very beginning. Um, then it moved to Newbury Racecourse, and that was sort of like the creme de la creme. It was awesome right. at Newbury. How many players it did was, they had at that point? It, back at Newbury, probably about 1,500. Yeah, that's already like that. pretty decent, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think they probably moved there when it started about 500, mm -hmm. something like that. And then it went to about 1,500, and I think the maximum they had is about four and a half thousand, if I remember oh, correctly. But I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's but by then they'd moved to the NEC. Um, but at Newbury, I, I remember back in the day at Newbury, you could take your own drinks in. <laughs> Um, you know, you can take your own beer. You like, you oh, can just go oh, to the recipe store. Recipe for a disaster. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's why they stopped. Like a lot of kids used to get really, really drunk, and I was a kid then. I was like, like say about fifteen. This is the best um, place I, ever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, I remember walking on stage one morning, and I, I think it was either a semi-final or final. Yeah. Uh, no, it would have been a semi-final, and I walked on the stage, and I was white as a ghost like so so ill from drinking i drank a box of wine the night before and i'd passed out and slept under a table all night and i woke up and the guy's like dude you got to play today you're like okay well like, when like now you've got to be on stage in a minute oh, oh okay 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 <laughs> went on stage and the whole time i was playing i was just thinking dude i'm going to throw up anytime now yeah. i'm going to be sick like i just need to get this game won so that we can leave and yeah, that was that was a crazy, crazy time. Um, but it sort of it was a safe place though. You know, there was no you. Everyone who was there just didn't sort of think it was crazy because you just knew you were safe there. Um, because it's probably because it was a lot smaller yeah. and everyone knew everyone. Yeah, maybe you no know, um, robbery, yeah. you know, people stealing stuff. Uh, I mean, like it yeah. happens to all the land events, right? And I guess back then as well. Um, the, do we add uh, RD represent? Yes, but <laughs> that's who we used to play for. <laughs> um, yeah, so back then, though, we had uh, 
uh, <laughs> we had a lot of a lot of fun in them events and that's where i actually met like a lot of my good friends like barry who's one of my best mates now i actually met them whilst playing that game so it's it holds a big place in my heart like battlefield 2 does um so yeah it's, it is a really good event but now they've just progressed and progressed and they're in the birmingham nec now which is a huge huge yeah. place you can you, they have multiple halls they have i think it's 25 halls and each one is huge and they have all the big any bands that come to the uk they play at the nec you know this is the biggest stadium here right. or well, one of the biggest um exhibits exhibition halls here and so now that you can expand infinitely if you wanted to you could have like fifty thousand byoc is there if they wanted to if the people would That's go crazy yeah but, they could make it probably yeah. the biggest land event in the whole the, in the whole world like even bigger than uh than dreamhack uh in sweden yeah, because dreamhack to, right yeah. now it's at sort of not maximum capacity but it's pretty close to that and they have like uh, 12 twelve thousand players actually Isai is on the on the chat is saying like so gamers assembly has 2500 players and twenty thousand visitors so insomnia is already the like almost three times the size i guess pretty much yeah 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 it, oh this time there's th there was three holes used for somnium but there's 20 holes in total and at one point they were actually saying that um they were hoping in the future to be able to sell out the be yeah. the, the nec and now it's not going to get it's just not going to happen it's just it's dropping down and dropping down and there was a bit of a, a sort of buzz on the on the grapevine saying that they go and move the location because they're not filling. You know, they're using halves of halls rather than full halls now. Mm -hmm. And that's just costing them a crazy amount of money. Yeah. And I think that's the issue. Cause well, yeah, because if you yeah, don't fill those there. halls, then uh, basically it's like a, it's a, literally a hole in your budget. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. I see what you did there. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, but it's true. Um, like, it's, it's understandable. And um, that's, I mean, that's always the, it's, that's why it's super when you, no, I wouldn't call it easy, but when you're a small event, um, everything you do, it's, it's so effective because you have so few resources. Uh, the space is smaller, so it costs you less. So the, the, the basically the tensions in terms of uh, the business of running it basically it's they are so much lower but once you start booking those big holes then you need to basically make sure that you get enough money to also pay for the holes and break even and keep going and maybe make a margin on top of that so basically they they have to bring in baby those higher value business uh, relationships and it gets some others maybe out of the door and because of that the focus is all on this on setting the holes rather than actually maybe making it more fun for the players that attend you know like uh, <laughs> Isai is mentioning at gamers assembly they have a they have a grandma championship so it's like elderly that play uh, pc games and console games and okay. they have a tournament for oh, that nice. but uh, it, nice. i mean it's true right why not you can cater to all kind of audiences and probably some of the early yeah. gamers of our times are now retired so <laughs> they, they sort oh, of yeah, fall in yeah. that category <laughs> yeah for sure i was gonna say I, I i try and play games nowadays and i suck now i'm, I'm so bad um yeah. barry who's been in the chat a little bit he's being him we, we used to smash games like we'd be if we weren't good at games we'd be frustrated now if we're good at first if we're good at a game mm -hmm. we have to go out and buy beer we're like whoa dude we've actually hit somebody yeah <laughs> and you know it's, we, we've gone the other yeah. way um but no, like like you say you'd expect as the event increases the big names had come and the the boobs had increased in size and they increased in notoriety and you know you'd expect them instead of having a little you know booth for a brand that's not very well known you'd have somebody come in like that's huge and just pay through the nose and have like all these big yeah fancy things there but it's just not happening because it seems to be that these little booths must get like a special rate or something because there's no way that they could afford the standard to rates, pay yeah. the price yeah there's no way because I think, I think before now it's been like forty-five thousand right. pounds to get there, and then an internet connection. If you want that, you need another mortgage for your house. Like they, they charge you a fortune for internet <laughs> on, crazy, in the yeah. in the exit. That's also the problems and, of those big holes, right? Like it's the same in uh, in Montreal. They have exhibit exhibition center, but it's the same also in the US because we've done some event. When you do anything there, you have to go through whatever is supplied by the venue, and this is usually completely. Uh, I mean, the pricings are, yeah. are like, when you see it, you're like, yeah, 
or not you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i could exactly. almost get satellite connection for that price and uh, and do it somewhere yeah. else you know than here but uh, yeah exactly and i think that's that's the problem now though because it, even though the event could increase in size quite easily it's not it's not that people don't want to go to insomnia like the guys that were in in my uh, post on mm -hmm. facebook did, we had you know 20 people there just commenting saying how bad it is now but all of them guys would have gone yeah just for the social side of things it's one of them times where everyone meets up everyone can have a beer everyone goes out for food you you know you can take the mick out of your friends and <laughs> have a laugh yeah and that, that's what it's about so so and, what do you see as uh being the future for uh, land events specifically in the uk or in the in the world if it i mean if that trend sort of expands to other places uh do you think lands are going to either completely disappear or they're going to still be there but maybe scale down i mean like um no i think what's going to happen is basically the smaller lands are going to become king um so instead of insomnia i've I actually had a few messages today asking me if I wanted to go to one of the um, other events that I, I usually attend, but I never have time. I never have time because the big events take my um, take my time away from me. But we have uh, one called Lan Ops in the UK, mm. and it's only a small event. I think it's about 40 people, 50 people. But I'm, I'm thinking about chucking some money behind that. Yeah. Um, you know, sponsoring that, like get some more people into there, turn that into a slightly bigger event maybe. Um, I also run a small LAN event with one of my friends, uh, MM LAN, that's up to 50 people. Um, but there's no, we have got the networking, we have got the infrastructure to do right. over that. So, but I think the small LANs, just get them bigger, get the sort of the community vibe going. Yeah. And so you may be better in. off. Uh, I mean, as a as a gamer nation or uh, the local community to have instead of having those huge massive me mega events uh it's maybe better for the community to have a lot of smaller ones with maybe max a thousand players or something like that yeah yeah, yeah i think because to be honest a lot of the gamers would as long as the bills are paid for the actual building i think that's where you know okay say you've got a, you've just spent 10 grand hiring out a building yep. for an event as long as they're making 15 grand total for pay for that and everything and this is how we used to run it our event used to cost us far less than that because it was a smaller one but as soon as the bills for the event were paid that was it that we just make an extra 100 pound to put into the pot just in case we needed anything else yeah buying and that switches was it. expanding stuff for next time yeah, or exactly. whatever um yeah so that so but that's basically that's also that brings up the point of um what it actually cost to also attend as a player and this discussion right now on the chat but it it's like it's true like uh also tickets for those mega events for the regular player the regular joe are quite expensive too like yeah, uh so yeah. as i mentioned dreamhack in montreal it's 120 bucks to go there as, a, as someone that wants to play which is actually on the on the top scale of what you pay for a, or bring your own pc mm -hmm. kind of thing i know dreamhack in sweden is maybe a little bit more than that actually uh but that's ten thousand to twelve thousand gamers and there's concerts and stuff so i mean you get a lot for it um but then yeah. all the small events that you mentioned those events are a lot cheaper right so as a player if you want to go multiple of them throughout the year then you you can as well because they are more affordable as well yeah for sure our event that we used to do was um 20 pounds ahead yep. and that was it so you come in 20 pound if you wanted the we used to have a barbecue on the sunday if you wanted to join into that, put five pound in the pot and you could eat as much as you want. And we used to always have like loads of food. Yeah. Insomnia, I'm not sure how much it is um, properly. Uh, let me see if I can find out. I've, um, I get a, a a free day because I've been to so many of them. I'm like diamond. Oh, now. right. They have the so, membership stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, because I think I've done, well, I've done loads of them, um, but I think it's about hundred pounds, right. something like that for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Plus whatever food um, you consume on site. And... Oh yeah, and food there is ridiculous prices. Beers ridiculous price. Even a bottle of pop, like a five hundred ml bottle of pop, is like three pound fifty. Mm. So you're talking, yeah. you know, it's just crazy. Like a, if you want a burger a bottle of pop and some chips some fries you're talking best part of 15 pounds yeah and it's it's you can't 
you, by the time you've paid for the whole event, you've got um, you've got a hotel, which because there's an event, they yeah. put the prices up, and that's like 100, 130 to 150 pound a night minimum, unless you're sharing with friends. Um, then you've got food, which you're spending probably forty pound a day on, because you know a couple of burgers and that that's it. That's forty pound. Yeah. Beer, beer for a crate of twenty four cans for to have at your desk. I think it's forty eight pound or forty nine pound now. <laughs> if you want to have a pint at the bar with your friends, Ooh, it's fancy. five pounds. Yeah, <laughs> five pounds a pint. Well, actually, um, five pounds. How much is that? Uh, whenever you check in Canadian, because I mean, uh, in Canadian, oh, I don't know actually. To, so I have an idea if it's actually a lot of money. <laughs> I guess it depends where oh, you it's are like in six, Canada. Six euros. Ish. Actually, it's yeah, a, it's yeah. a regular price here, sadly enough. <laughs> but, yeah, well, but here, well, alcohol is extra taxed, so yeah. To be fair, if you were in London, it's about the same price anyway. Yeah. But from where we are, like up, yes. I'm in the Midlands, and where we are, it's like for me to, I can go out and buy a pint for two pounds. Yeah. Oh, so it's, you know, it's, it's I miss it for that. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but this is the problem. So you can either go on holiday. For you know, you could go abroad for a week, yeah, or you can go for insomnia for four days and sit in a room sat next to a load of smelly guys mm-hmm. that haven't showered for three days. Choices, guys, you know, choices. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which one do you want to do? And this is the this is it. Or you can do the smaller events, and it's just the same. You're still playing games. Usually, you're with the same people. You're hanging out with the same guys because you all go to the same events yeah. as well. It's just there's more of you at the big one. So there's just like it's just a strange, strange um, place that yeah. insomnia is now. A lot of people are thinking that it might just go to one event a year now yep, and yep. just do the big. But that's big it. Yeah, if you uh, you can't afford to do them all, so you're gonna have to choose. Uh, Yella on the chat is saying you also have to not forget the merch that you're eventually buying there and the games you might yeah, want to oh, buy yeah. and maybe the games you, that you don't have but you need to buy them to be able to play them. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 for sure. I've got a uh, yeah, taxi and the taxi rides, uh, Uber, whatever you need to move around. I mean, yeah, for sure, it's yeah. it's quite uh it's quite an investment actually. You need to save for it all year round. Yeah, so I I put my expenses in for insomnia, and I think overall it was about seven hundred and fifty pounds yep. that I put in, and I didn't take anyone for a meal this time, which usually. Um, I'd take some influencers out for some food right. or, I'd, you know, you'd go to the bar or you'd pay for some pub, extra pub quiz tickets or something. Mm. Um, this time, didn't have any of that because there was no one there. <laughs> it was that simple. And the only guys that were there, like um, Syndicate and Squirrel, the Twitch guys, um, I just went for a beer with one and then Twitch took it and Squirrel took me for Dando, so I didn't have to pay for that, which was nice. Um, so, yeah, it's just... It's just not what it used to be at all. And it's a shame because yeah. I do love it. Well, well, I hope maybe the the Insomnia folks uh, will be listening to this uh, this podcast and they will be able to to understand what the community is asking for. I think it's... Um, I mean, uh, for as a French person that we have Gamers Assembly in France, I've been to Dreamhack here in Montreal. Um, it's not that bad yet there and it's quite sad to see... Um, the states of uh, of affairs now in the UK for that. I, I do hope Insomnia will become big. I mean, if you say the holes are massive, there's so much potential. No. I hope they don't waste their chance and they listen to the community and, you know, they, they work on the social side. They uh, look at having more concerts, maybe more tournaments, even if it's more grassroots, uh, maybe managed even by the players that attend the, the bring your own PC stuff themselves. You know, like a lot of it can be done that it makes it a lot more fun and nicer to go. And well, and then for the show side, the, the expo, mean, that's, I mean, that's their business decisions, basically. Yeah, that's actually happening at the moment. So the guys that have been going to for years like for instance Henners, mm-hmm. one of the, commu- the community managers they are actually taking it upon themselves now to sort of organize things for the byoc crowd because no one else is doing it really like it seems like game don't want to put the money into it so they're or or they're, they're getting the a budget for these community yeah. guys i don't know how it works but they are setting up like um areas where you can have social 
just the social area with bean bags and tables, mm-hmm, the setting up nice, yeah. area for board games. So you can, and they bring a whole huge boxes of board games. That you can just grab one and sit down and play games. And stuff like that is awesome. And them guys are trying the best. You know, they set up a Discord. So if you've got any problems, you can talk to them and they'll try and help you out. Um, the Yellow Jackets, are the, like they are the, um, the volunteers. <laughs> the they Yellow were, Jackets, were, not like the French yeah, ones. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, the good one, the ones that, that well, we'll say all of them are good, I guess, but yeah. hey, these is how you look at it. Um, but yeah, so them guys are doing the best to get everything sorted that's out. That's cool, yeah. So hats off to those so, guys yeah. for sure. That's a, yeah, that's yeah, a tough sure. job, and it's, I mean, like, it's. Even yeah. the guys that are fixing the equipment, because this time there was loads of problems with the internet, it kept going up and down. And the guys doing that network gap team, once again, fantastic. It's just. The whole, you know, the people behind it who want to earn the money just seem to be just slamming it into yeah. the ground. Greed, guys. On the... Don't be too greedy. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, well, thanks, Dave. Uh, I think it's um, this will pretty much wrap up the, the show for, for this week. Uh, we, we should get you back on the show at some point to talk about your modding skills because here we actually didn't really talk about it and you do some really yeah. cool stuff. Uh, some are rainbow things and a lot of uh, <laughs> fancy stuff as well. Um, we'll get you back on the show another time for that. Sure. Uh, where can people find you if they want to follow you and see what you're up to? Or if it's pretty much everything for me is at Davido underscore libido, uh, except for I think Facebook, which is just mods by Davido libido. Um, but yeah, if you if you check your social media, I think you tag me as well. Okay. So uh, you you can check out your OCTV yep, stuff, and I'm sure you'll uh, find me. Perfect. That's awesome. Well, thanks, David, uh, for being on the show. Thank you uh, to you guys uh, who are either watching live now, watching the replay in a few minutes on YouTube, or basically listening to this. Uh, if you are watching it, make sure to also check us out as an audio podcast for when you're on the road and bandwidth is limited, which is something that's happening all the time in North America. Uh, you guys can uh, check it out on uh, iTunes. You find it on Google uh, Podcasts and on Spotify and all those places uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like it support the show by just sharing it uh, onto your facebook or whatever account you're using for social media nowadays this helps out a lot and motivates us to do more of those uh, david thanks again for your time and uh, we'll see me. you guys uh, next week